good down there? How's everyone on the back? Can you hear me all right? Good. 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 All right, so first of all, um, just a little note on what we're going to be doing here. If you don't have particularly great eyes, that's fine, but you might want to move forward a little bit. So if I come out of that and just... So basically, you want to be able to see this. If you, can, if you can't read that, do move forward. There's loads of room. Uh, I'm going to try another way. Everyone's okay? All right. Don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> My name is Chris Cohen, and uh, I want to take you through PHP Storm. But a little bit about me first. I think that's obligatory, etc. I work for Ixis, a uh, Manchester, but well, Warrington-based company that uh, does a lot of Drupal hosting, Drupal development for people like um, Rich Council and sort of uh, big sort of people like that with cloud level hosting and that kind of stuff. But I'm more on the development side, so. I've been doing Drupal for six years now, started off with Drupal 5, maybe in the, the early days of Drupal 5, um, through 6 and 7, and 8 to come. But I'm, I, I came from a formal background in programming, so when we talk about PHP, we don't, you know, it's, it's, it started out as a scripting language, it wasn't used very formally, objects were only added later, so my training was in Java, you feel free to boot, no? All right. Um, but C sharp and, and things like that. So, as a result of that, my focus really is on writing quality, robust code that works every time, no matter who you give it to. Anyone can come along, take on this kind of code, and just understand it straight away without having to, to mess around, which is where the documentation comes in as well. So, focus on quality and really knowing how to write good code, which leads to why. <coughs> use an IDE in the first place, right? So, how many of you use a full-blown IDE right now? Stick up your hand. About third, maybe? Okay. Um, just shout out what you use if you're not using an IDE. Stuff like Sublime, maybe, or? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anything else? No? All right. So, yeah, you might use something like, I don't know, Xcode or Notepad++ if you happen to be on Windows or something like that. So for me, it's all about making your life easier. Writing code is fun. Writing good code well, consistently, can be a chore if you're not using the right tools. And what that tends to mean is people kind of don't do it. They sort of they think, oh, it's really hard, you know, I, I don't want to do this. because. I have to write all this documentation and it has to be in the right format and I don't know what format that is. But the IDE is going to make your life easier because it's going to show you how to do it. And if you don't do it right, it's going to tell you straight away, which a text editor won't. So, highlighting code problems as you type them. That's really useful. We'll come on to that in a little bit more detail later on. But the main thing there is uh, traditionally Drupal developers didn't do any of this stuff. So you end up with contrib and it's, well, it's all kinds of crap to contrib. Um, it's getting better over the years, it has got a lot better. Um, there still are a lot of problems. But what people tend to do is, have you heard of the coder module? Anyone use coder, the module? Yeah? So you can review your code at the end. So you write your code, do whatever to it, you press a button and it kind of goes, ah, oh, you shouldn't have put a new line there, or you shouldn't have used a curly brace or something. Um, you can actually do that as you type. And it's not limited to IDEs, other things can do it as well. Um, I know there's some Sublime plugins that will actually do a very similar thing, but um, if you don't make the mistake in the first place, because it tells you straight away, then you don't have to spend an hour going through all that thousand lines of code you've written, tidy up later, which is nice. You don't have to remember exact function method names, oh, PHP is terrible for this because of the lack of namespacing, you know, um, stuff like, uh, uh, let's think of an example, substring, S sub, sub str. Parameters to that. What's the first parameter to that? Yeah? But then there's other functions where you, you've got uh, haystacks and needles, and then sometimes it's a haystack first, sometimes a needle first, things like that. So it's really confusing. But if it's in front of you, you don't have to go off to php.net. It's not a big hassle to go off to php.net and look it up, is it? But if you have to do that a load of times, it's kind of easier to have it in front of your face. Makes your code better. So. We all make mistakes, especially me. But um, if you if you notice a mistake straight away because the IDE is pointing them out to you, it's doing some of the work, it's taking some of the effort out of it for you, which is nice. That style as well. So we heard before, if you were in, in here in particular, we heard about PSR 
those the set of standards come in into PHP to try and make sure everyone's writing the same level of PHP, the same way of writing. So if you see an array and it's nested inside another array and things like that, you're going to be you're going to be able to read it without having to think, why is that on three lines instead of one, or why is this all on one line and going off the screen to the right? So hopefully, we'll get to the same stage of Drupal where everyone's writing the same standards compliant code. In contrib at the moment, there's no requirement to do it. I mean, everyone's encouraged to write Drupal standards compliant code, but if you don't, I mean, I don't think there's any automated checks that are going to go, no, you're not allowed to commit that. Um, which leads on to the next point, which is making other people's lives easier. If I want to download a patch or module, and I've got no idea why you've made certain decisions because you haven't documented it, or you've used weird coding standards that I don't recognize, um, it's one of two things. Either I'm going to mess it up because I've made a mistake that I haven't noticed you've done something differently, or I'm just going to sit there and convert it first, um, which is going to waste my time. So it's going to make my life easier if I download your code. And it's nice. It works for other people, like me. And it's also easy to maintain, so when I give you changes back, you're not then going to convert it into your own language, or your own version of PHP, whatever you like to use. You notice at the top of the slide, before we move on, that's this white IDE, and let's say white PHP storm. So, what I'm advocating here is using an IDE. Now, PHP storm is the one that I've chosen, it seems to be gaining popularity. Um, when I first found out, a bit of a dodgy story, but I found out about it, I went to the loo in um, DrupalCon London. <laughs> for some reason, they decided to put a load of flyers in the toilets. So, uh, you know, I was happily doing business, and then there was a flyer. So I thought, well, oh, you know, what's this? And you, you see a lot of these flyers at events like this, and some of them are useful to you, others aren't. So I just took it anyway, because it said, you know, free trial for the year. And I thought, oh, okay. Get something for free while I'm on the job, why not? Um, and then it was one of those moments where you download the software, and you kind of think, this is actually really good. You know, most of the stuff you kind of you try these tools and it, and it sells it really well on the website. It's a glossy website. You think this is great. You download it and you think, well, this is either unfinished or you know, doesn't quite do what it said on the tin. But um, this is one of those cases. So that's why I'm advocating using PHP Storm. But there are other IDEs out there. There's um, NetBeans, Eclipse, uh, Komodo, things like that. Um, various stages of completion. Eclipse has been around for a long time. NetBeans has been around for a long time. But we can have a look. But if you're still not convinced, I wanted to give you a few more reasons why you should be using an IDE and not a text editor. First of all, code and object hierarchy. So, if you open up, this is an example from uh, node.module. <coughs> if you open up node.module, you've just got a straight up list of everything. So these are, uh, these are your um, uh, definitions, so the constants if you like. You can see all of those, and you can see all of them, and you can see I've actually, I've sorted this A to Z, so they're in alphabetical order for me, nice and easy. I can find, if I want to find node load in that from, in that file, it's, it's like a 2,000, 3,000 line file or something like that. I don't want to be scrolling through or typing search and typing it. I can just find it in a list. And as well as that, I can see how to call it. You know, it's got all the different, you know, you have to, you have to pass a node into this one, for example. It's fairly obvious that you have to do that. That's always on the screen. Uh, we'll go into some more how to set this up later because I've got a particular way that I recommend of doing this, um, which makes it very easy to see. Um, also, if you use this with objects, which is going to be more prevalent in Drupal 8, what it means is that you will be able to see inheritance, which members are inherited, which methods and properties are inherited, and where are they inherited from, <coughs> and how far up the chain does it go. That, that information is there on the screen, it's ready for you, and you can filter that with the, the little buttons at the top. Obviously, for a procedural file like node.module, it doesn't really apply. Still not convinced? No, I don't think so. All right. Step debugger. How many people use one at the moment? Line by line debugging. So about 10%. OK. Um, anyone using it with PHP Storm right now? Most people. OK. Yeah. So um, that's outside the scope of this particular talk. I'm hoping to get more talks going and either do it myself or encourage people to talk more about how to set this up because it is the setup I think is what puts people off. But the advantage is you can stop any point in the code at all, pretty much. I mean not in the middle of the comment. But any point at all you can just put one of these things in a breakpoint, big red splodge, and you can say, when PHP gets here stop and the page will load. You press the page load and it'll stop and it will it'll freeze in time while you look at it. 
So you can see when we get to this, and this apologies, this isn't actually this is JavaScript, I think not not PHP, but uh, you can see the values of all the variables. You can change the values of the variables. You can keep track of them throughout the page loads. And you can see the call stack as well. So you can see how far into different functions, what, what order the functions were executed, those kind of things. That's really powerful because the traditional way of debugging is just to kind of drop, uh, you know, DPM or um, print R or var dump or crumo or one of those things. And that's good if you just want a quick answer. But how many times have you gone into the code and you thought, oh, I've dropped about 10 of these var dumps in here and I'm still no closer. My, my page is just covered in like massive arrays printed out everywhere and I'm thinking, I don't really know what's going on here. It'd be nice to do this in a more clean way and that's really what this is. <coughs> this works remotely as well, so um, even if you're working, say, in a virtual machine or you're working on a development server that's physically somewhere else, you can still do this, which is really nice. Uh, yeah, talked about that one already. More convincing, all right, you're still not convinced. So, um, profiler? Is anyone using the profiler at the moment to examine their code? Yeah, just a couple, yeah, so gradually getting more and more into the sort of hardcore functionality, but uh, is it XHprof you're using or? Yeah, okay, so. So what this does is, um, again, it's not a Drupal example, apologies, but it, this is, how many times has each function been called? Is array has been called 2,070 times in this page request. Did you know that already? Probably not. I didn't when I started using a profiler. Just, just how many things get called, like how many times is T called in one request? No idea. But I mean, you can also see how much time that's taken. So these are milliseconds, it's not, it's not really taking any significant amount of time. But if you see that a function, like if you're using bed view or something, you've called that 20,000 times, you're gonna be thinking, probably shouldn't have done that on one page request, why is there so many views on this page, you know, and you can actually track down problems that you wouldn't otherwise have noticed. We are getting towards the more hardcore, so probably smaller and smaller groups of people will find this kind of thing useful, but you can do it. Execution time, time spent in each query, um, also <coughs> just get a general idea of what's going on, you know, how many functions have you got, do you, can you cut down, do you need all these different functions, or should you be doing these as method calls? Um, We've got a few examples there, pair, pair, and, and things like that. Generally gives you a better picture. Even more convincing, still. Version control. Uh, anyone was in uh, Lorna Jane's talk earlier? She was talking about um, graphical tools for Git. I think Git's great. Um, I do get confused by the command line sometimes. Um, I'm not a sysadmin. I know how to use it, but I prefer to do things in the graphical way if possible, so a good IDE will do this. You can do commits straight from the IDE. And you can also see diffs, so um, graphical diffs. You are kind of sometimes limited by the command line. The inter terminal interface can be constricting because there is a limited size. You can't see all the text on the screen sometimes. Visual merges is the most useful thing because um, I think Lorna Jane made a good point earlier when she said that Git is painless with merging compared to other VCS technologies. But there are situations where things have deviated so much that you need to do a merge and there is a conflict and you need to work out how to resolve this because you've got five files and there's bits of code here and bits of code there and you're not sure what goes where. In um, an IDE, you'd just be able to see that graphically. So you'd be able to go, this is a file over here in one state, this is a file over there in the other state. I'm going to choose the bits that I want and I'm going to put them in the middle. And I apologize, there's no screenshot for that, but take my word for it. That is more convenient. Are you convinced yet? No, I don't think so. We'll carry on. So, choices. Clips? Anyone using the clips right now? No? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of fallen out of favor. Um, with PHP anyway, I don't know about other technologies. I used it for a while, but then I found out your PHP is not It's free, open source, uh, it's clunky. I think it's clunky anyway. Um, a lot of people say oh, it crashes all the time, you know, things like that. Yeah, beans? Yep, we've got one, two, three people, four people using NetBeans. This is my personal opinion, feel free to disagree, but I think it's kind of the same. Stuff works, for the most part, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> We have a, a disagreeer in the back. All uh, right, okay, so you are agreeing with me then, so yeah, it is clunky. Okay. There's others as well, I mean, we're only going to show three here, but um, 
I don't think it's as clunky. I think it works better. First, first time, just set it up, it works. That's what I want. I want a pain-free, hassle-free existence when I'm developing. Not everyone does. I mean, some people might like to compile their own version of, of NetBeans or something like that using the open source, you know, you know fork it or make something out of it. That's not really for me. I just want to get on and write code. As in write code that's not making an IDE. <laughs> it's not free. Okay, so you might be thinking, well, we were talking about open source technology here. Drupal is open source and it's free. Why would I want to spend money on a tool? <coughs> there is that. So it leads on to this. Why, why should I spend money on PHP Store? It's £76 a year if you're an individual. If you're working for a company, you can get a corporate license. Uh, it'd be more than that. Um, but, you know, they have taken a different business model. I think because it's rock solid, it works. It hasn't crashed in ages since I've been using it. In fact, it just doesn't crash. But it, it, you set it up, and it stays set up, and it stays working, and there's not loads of updates that suddenly break things. Mm -hmm. How many of you got on that? Right here, right now. Well, loads of you. All right? You could have bought a PC, right? They're cheap. Yeah, you didn't. You bought a Mac. They're cheap. They're more expensive than a PC. But they just, they just work, they're nice to use, yeah? The build quality is great. You know it's not just gonna, buy. it's probably not just gonna break down in two months, like a PC might. These are the reasons why I think it's worth considering paying for this kind of thing. Okay, it's not open source, yeah? That might be one reason why you don't wanna do it, but I would rather spend 76 pounds a year on something and have a good time knowing that I can develop code, rather than potentially lose 76 pounds worth of business messing around with a problem because my IDE keeps crashing. But uh, that's how I justify it, anyway. Your mileage may vary. And there are downsides. So uh, let's have a look at those downsides. It runs on Java. Oh, no. It's the end of the world. So Java's better than it was. All the IDEs pretty much run on Java. Uh, it is a pain, but it does mean that you can get PHP Storm for, for Windows, for Mac, and for Linux. They all look the same. They all work the same. They're pretty much identical, which is kind of nice. Um, in actual fact, and uh, it doesn't matter for me that it's Java. Uh, I don't know about, probably not Mac and Windows, but it's pretty easy. On Linux, it's pretty easy to install Java nowadays, even even the Sun version, basically. So it's the Oracle stuff. It is fairly resource intensive. It's doing more than a text editor. It's doing more than opening a text file and displaying it on the screen. It doesn't have to mean slow. Uh, I personally, SSDs are quite cheap nowadays. So you know, got an SSD works really fast. Improved everything else that I was doing at the same time. You don't have to run it on an SSD. Uh, it will take longer. Uh, little things like, um, instead of opening the entirety of Drupal as a project, don't open the entirety of Drupal, just open the files that you want to work on. So if you're working on a site, uh, just open those site files, because you're not going to be changing Drupal core, right? There's no need to change, like you shouldn't be changing Drupal core. That's a different story. Um, it is more complicated to use, but uh, you developers, you already handle stuff like writing migrate plugins and you know writing rules integration and stuff like that. That's pretty complicated. Using an IDE is just another tool. And if the complexity of learning it ends up saving you time in the long run, I think that's well worth it. Well, now we've got those downsides out of the way. Um, there are people who say this. Um, and it does vary, because if you're just working with templates, so you're just working as a designer or a theme implementer, shall we say, because it's a bit more involved with Drupal than just designing things. Yeah, it's fine. Do it. But if you've even got a slight inkling that maybe you should be using an IDE, you probably should. And I hear this a lot of, a lot of the time. But I, I don't want to have to learn something else, because it looks complicated, or it's wrong in Java, and I hate Java, or it costs money, or, you know, it costs money, you've got a problem with it, there's free alternatives, you use that. If you don't like Java, eh, maybe just grow up, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you really don't need to use it, I think you'll know. But if it can save you some time, in the long run, I think it's well worth it. So let's have a look, I've talked enough, we have <coughs> some actual stuff. This is PHP Storm in action. I have made the text bigger, I can't make the interface bigger. So, like I said, uh, if anyone's joined since 
and you can't see this writing around the edge, do me closer, or just don't see it, I don't mind. <laughs> uh, config, first of all, there's a lot of stuff in here. There's a lot of stuff in the config. You can set up in, in a multitude of ways, but that up there's a search box. Always use a search box in config, otherwise you're just going to be messing around for ages. For some reason, I, the default is not to show line ends, line numbers. So just turn on, I say line. So turn on the line numbers here, uh, and then even then, I mean, you still, it's not somewhat clear where it is. But we've got editor appearance here, and show line numbers is turned on, but it's not by default, and I don't know why you wouldn't want to know what line you're on. So that's a good thing to turn on. Um, once you've done that. And this is down to a Drupal standards thing. Um, white space, you can show white space if you want. <coughs> but uh, I, I choose not to. But the more important thing in here is in the editor settings, uh, stripping trailing spaces on save. So you know when you've got a line of code and, and for some reason there's tabs at the end of it or there's extra space, um, you can't see it unless you turn that other setting on where you can see white space. But most people can't see it and Drupal won't allow that. Coding standard says you're not allowed to have any white space in the end of any lines after whatever is on that line, even if it's a blank line. It needs to be blank, <coughs> not with loads of spaces on it. So change that to all. Ensure line feed at the end of the file is safe. And uh, then you click on gas. Now, I did, I did write a lot of blog posts about setting up PHP Storm in the past because I wanted to encourage people to use it, but I was aware that there's, there's about a thousand of these things you've got to do to set up. Um, JetBrains listened, and it is something very cool, which means that you can now go into code style PHP, and there's something called set from here. When you just click set from, predefined style, Drupal, that's built in. So you've got Drupal support there already, and that does most of the other things. Line numbers, no, that's not to do with Drupal. White space doesn't do that for some reason, but it will do things like this. So your index is set to two. Um, tab sizes are relevant because you're not using tabs as spaces. And you can then copy that style over to use things like CSS if you wanted as well. So that does most of the work. There are some other things that you will want to do. So the other thing I wanted to talk about here was the, the warning color. Um, like I said before about Quality, standards, quality, that kind of thing. I am a big fan of writing the code correctly the first time and not going back to it. You might need to go back to it to make changes because your client might not be happy with it, but generally not going back to it because it's problems. And that means I want to know the problems exist before I do it. So you can see in here, oh, that's not the right file, but we'll do that one. So that's the node file. Well, that's pretty big and it doesn't fit much on the screen, but. Um, We'll come down to a problem here. So that's a problem. Now by default in PHP Storm, what it does is it just underlines it with this little crappy yellow underline. You know those red underlines, they're quite obvious. The yellow one doesn't show up. So I end up just scrolling straight past it and not finding it. So colors and fonts, change that to a nice, big, bold, yellow highlight. You can't ignore that. That's pretty obvious that there's something wrong with your code there. Move your mouse over it. No data sources are configured, so you know, I haven't set up this site properly. I could do that to get rid of that. You can set it up pretty much however you want. There's sites dedicated to themes that you can download, and you can skin it however you want. So I'm using the default colors just because I don't have to faff around, but uh, a lot of people prefer a dark background these days. That's no problem. There's several variants of that. I think it's just, just Google PHP Storm themes, really, and just take your pick. Um, there's also different ways of implementing different fonts. It's all XML based configuration. So you can set it up pretty much however you want. Code snip is a big thing for me um, because this is a thing that uh, PHP Storm is going to tell you if you make obvious mistakes. Like you don't put the semicolon on the end of a line. It's going to tell you because it knows that's PHP. You have to put a semicolon on the end of this particular line. Code sniffer is different. Code sniffer will look for style problems. And as part of that coder module we were talking about before, there's actually a, there's a code sniffer suite for Drupal. And what that means is code sniffer will look at your code in the IDE and actually work out what the problems are. So the steps involved here, 
uh, are downloading code sniffer, which you can get through pair. Uh, there's a plenty of instructions. It's not really specific setting up code sniffer. Mac, Windows, Linux, they're all different instructions for doing that, but uh, you're big boys and girls, you can do that for yourself. Um, then you will need to download the coder module, which you're using the standards from it, so you're not actually installing the module into the Drupal site, so that can go anywhere. And then you just take the standards out of that and put them into CodeSniffer. Once they're in CodeSniffer, this is the tricky bit. It's not really even that tricky, but um, under inspections here, we've got PHP CodeSniffer validation. Once you set up CodeSniffer, it automatically knows how to do this, and you've got a list of standards. And because I downloaded Drupal standards and put them in my list, they're in here. And what that does, every time I do a mistake in Drupal, this isn't a PHP mistake, it still runs, PHP strip, if I do this, go on. <laughs> File. Okay, we'll try a different file. Why is that? Why is that yellow? Anyone know? Spaces are on the upper end. Yeah, exactly. So if I move my ass over it, it will actually say uh, one space before the plus, one space after the plus. Uh, it's amazing how many people don't do that. It, it doesn't affect the code. I mean, the code will still run fine, but the next developer looking at it is going to go, why are all these numbers and variables all mushed together and I can't read them properly? So, courtesy, really, just write it like that. And then the idea, you obviously can't ignore that because it's a bright yellow line. That's the advantage with it. There's plenty of guides online about how to set this up, really. So, um, again, it, it, to actually do the setup would be an individual talk, probably. And uh, we don't have all the time in the world. For my next step, I will require two volunteers. Um, it would be useful if you are volunteering if you know how to write PHP. That's pretty much the only requirement here. Yeah? So um, they don't volunteer at once, by any means. And two of you. Stephen over there, that's one. And uh, I need another volunteer. Yes, please come forward. Brave volunteers. I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> So, uh, this is Stephen, your computer minds, I believe, and uh, Chris, a code enigma. Yes. Excellent. So I'm going to pick on Stephen first, since you were the first to volunteer. What I want to show you is how much of a difference this can make to your code style. And by doing this, what I'm going to do is ask Chris to go out of the room so he doesn't see this next part. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the other session, so it's probably best to go out that door. No peeking, please. <laughs> What we're going to do is not invite him back in for the rest of the session and get him really, uh, get him really confused as to what's going on. But, um, <laughs> no, we will. I'm joking. We will invite him back in. I think. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a minute. I want you to find as many coding standards problems in the file that comes up on the screen as possible in a minute. So if you'd like to come over here and use the Mac, I would like to physically correct those coding standards problems. Off you go. A minute. <laughs> this is really unfair. This is a loaded test, but <laughs> he's a good sport. <laughs> Time's up. So there were four mistakes in there. Uh, he's correctly identified there was no, no full stop in the end, like the boot, for example. Uh, this, this is true. You see the true down there? That should be in capitals. Um, 
So, partial success, I'd say. But round of applause for Stephen. <laughs> and now, if you could, uh, if someone could invite Chris back in, that would be brilliant. Where is he? Chris. <laughs> I thought you got to the pub or something. <laughs> So we're going to do the same thing again, Chris. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some code. <coughs> okay. And you're going to have a minute. Stand. If you'd like to stand in front of the Mac, because you're going to have a minute to correct all of the coding standards problems in the code that you see. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> is he allowed to use Vim? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why has that done that? He's not allowed to use Vim. So the code is here. And go. Oh, you're kidding. Um, So obviously it was really unfair because you can get syntax highlighters for other languages that work with Drupal, or other IDEs that work with Drupal, etc. But that's just really to demonstrate that it is very, very good at what it does. Once it's set up properly, it's a lot easier to spot mistakes before they happen. And if Chris had been writing that code from scratch, then he would have been um, able to know before he commits that he's actually got a problem sort that out and then commit it rather than deal with it all later. And it can be overwhelming when you've got a thousand or two thousand lines of code to go through and fix up coding standards and all of that. Not my favourite thing in the world, I'd rather just know straight up. Thanks very much. Any questions? Yeah. Just put them back in. How does it handle what, sorry? So you had a Windows machine. So are you talking about are you talking about editing files on a remote server directly? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's not something I do. Generally, our development locally is virtual machine based, where the physical files are mapped to yeah. virtual machines. So I can't answer that one, I'm afraid. But do look it up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes. First question: You can connect to remote servers via FTP, FTP shell. It lets you actually, if you can run it, if you run it locally, you can actually edit files that are on remote servers connected to them digitally. Brilliant. Thanks for that. Great. Any others at all? Yeah. Is it possible to send any application settings that for the IPMs? Sorry, could you speak up a little bit? So, can you set the implementation settings uh, for every project? Not to my knowledge. Um, indentation would be ID specific, so language specific. So, if you set indentation for PHP, it would assume that you want to do that for all PHP files, as far as I know, unless you know different. Um, if you bring up the settings in PHP Store, Um, so, if you look on the on the left there, project settings. So everything down to XSLT file associations is specific per project, and then you have IDE settings underneath. So everything in that top section can be per project, uh, and you can have a template that applies for new projects. So these everything. code style, for, for so, example, so you can have different code style per projects. Is is what you're saying? Then. Okay, I'm learning too. <laughs> yes. Um, does it know the Drupal functions like it would a PHP function? So if you just type in no load, it would know the syntax. Yeah, it's a very good question that. Um, if you open your Drupal as a whole Drupal, yes. So if you open if you open your project as a root of Drupal, it knows what functions exist within Drupal because it scans the entire project. If you don't, if you just open your site, then you can still map the crucial folder. So you could map Drupal modules folder from your site specific project. So it would still know. So it would go through node module and find out all the functions in there. But that is important because you don't want to be calling functions that don't exist. You want the the IT to know about that. There's also some things that you can upload. I can't remember where I got them from, but you can just type in the hook name and press tab, and it'll generate the whole function signature documentation for it and a skeleton version of an implementation of that hook. Now that's not default, is it? 
No, no, that's something yes. you have to go and, and I can't it's remember if I got it yeah. off your blog or somewhere else, but if you search for Drupal mm. and PHP Storm, you can find that and it's... Yeah. But it, as you're typing functions as a default, it will provide you. If you type node underscore, it'll just give you a list of choices so that you can just decide which node underscore function you mean as well. Yes, anyone else? How, just one over here, yeah. How's it compared to Coda? I haven't used Coda, I'm okay. afraid. Um, but maybe someone else could answer that if, if anyone in the room has any experience of that. I guess not. I know <laughs> Sorry about that. This code where I can put you in touch. Oh, I like that scale, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, any others? I, this is a genuine cry for help. Um, I've, I've tried the trial on, um, on both on Mac and it looks great. The, the, the font, um, I don't know if you alluded to this when you said, you know, if you're moaning about JavaScript. I think it's a Java issue, but the font um, in PHP Store um, is pretty um, abrasive to the eyes. Is anybody using it on like Ubuntu and managed to, I know there's several things you can do with um, doing funky things with your fonts. Is anybody using it on Ubuntu and, and happy with the way the text is rendered? I, yeah, I use it on both, Ubuntu. Yeah. I used it on Windows at one stage just because the team I was working with used Windows. Um, it is a font rendering thing, but you can choose. I mean, there, there is a choice. If you're not happy with the default, you can choose. You can change that. Do you, are you saying that you find them all abrasive? Yeah, but it's, it's just the way, I, I, I think it's Java fonts on, on I don't know whether it's Linux, you know, uh, or just Ubuntu, but I find them quite difficult. You know what you should do? You should use Vim. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, if, has anyone, generally, has anyone actually come across yeah, that issue I, at all? Or? I can probably show you tomorrow. We'll, we'll have a chat. It's quite a yeah. complicated issue. Okay. okay, I think uh, we'll probably wrap it up unless there's any final questions. No? Okay. Right. Thanks very much. Thank you.